The following coverage of the International Livestock Congress Beef 2009 at the Calgary Stampede is brought to you by HaneyFarms.com, your canola, corn, and cereal seed experts. Okay, we're here today on RealAgriculture.com with Glenn Hodgson. Glenn is Senior Vice President and Chief Economist with the Conference Board of Canada out of Ottawa. Thank you, Glenn, for joining us today. Good morning, Sean. So Glenn, today you talked about uh, the global recession and uh, where we're headed from here. Do you want to elaborate on that for uh, the viewers of uh, the website? Okay, well we've obviously gone through a really, really tough period the last uh, 6, 9, 12 months caused by the U.S. housing market, the whole subprime blow up and the fact that we're able to spread the financial pain around the world. Um, I think Q1, the first quarter of this year, was the worst quarter. I mean, we have evidence, for example, that that Japan contracted by 15% on an annualized basis in that quarter. We know that Chinese growth slowed way down. We certainly know that America's economy contracted by about 5.5%, Canada about 6%. So all the bad news is out there. But we're also seeing what some have called green shoots, the little bits of evidence that we're forming for us now in a lot of markets. And of course, if you're falling, you're going to form a four first, and then you can start, start recovering. We've had huge stimulus in terms of interest rates being cut to virtually zero in the U.S. and in Canada and a lot of other countries. <coughs> and monetary stimulus now starting to roll out. It's taken a bit of time, but the evidence that all the spending on infrastructure stuff, for example, in the U.S. and Canada is now starting to happen. So to me, all that points to we're now entering the recovery period, where we might not see growth until Q4. We might see a, little, a few signs of growth, for example, by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to recover by the end of this year, we think, and into 2010. The problem is it's not going to be a very profound recovery. It's going to be a very weak recovery. I called it the joyless recovery in a commentary I did in the Global mm -hmm. Mail on, on Monday. Because there is so much baggage being carried by the U.S. consumer in particular, who had, was carrying you know, over-mortgaged, over-indebted, saw the value of their property fall by maybe a third over the last two years, stock market meltdown, worried about, about uh, job loss. So all that's created a pretty negative mood in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the United States consumer is 15% of the world. 15% of global GDP is US consumption. And imagine if we have a very weak recovery that lasts 18 months, two years. Well, that means that the recovery is not gonna be very profound. So I see the floor forming right now. There will be growth, I think, by the end of this year but it's not going to be very pretty growth. It's going to be kind of an ugly recovery. So do you see agriculture being one of the industries globally that is going to be a part of that leading that, that growth, that recovery or? Well, I, I think it's already leading. You know, we've seen the floor hit for many commodity prices. You know, I look at the, the, the commodity prices every day and whether it's ag prices, metal prices, you know, we started with energy. It probably flipped then into, into metals, things like copper and aluminum prices. We're also now starting to see a very sort of tepid recovery in ag prices. So yes, agriculture will be part of the recovery, um, but it's, it's also not going to be really profound because it's not like consumers have a lot of extra dollars to spend right now when they go to the grocery store mm -hmm. for dinner. So it's going to be a careful, measured recovery we're going to see in the ag sector, I would expect. Mm -hmm. Coupled with the fact that, that um, we're having some, some weather challenges in places like Western Canada and Western United States right now, so who knows what that's going to do to crop yields. I mean, usually that means upward pressure on prices, but there may be a really negative impact on, on yields for many people too. So when I talk to a lot of uh, farms and, and ranchers, uh, I would say you know, across North America, one of the, the biggest questions when it comes to the economy that I get asked is, are people wanting information on interest rates? Like you mentioned, interest rates are at unbelievably low levels. There's a lot of mortgage renewals and things going on. And, um, in particular with farms and ranchers as they're trying to purchase land or assets, there's a lot of concern on interest rates. What, do you, what, do you, what is your outlook there? Well, we do a formal forecast of rates at the short end. I mean, it's part of our economic forecast for Canada and for the U.S. And our view is that rates are going to stay at record low levels until, in the U.S. probably until the fourth quarter of this year. You know, the, you, you can get a 30-day U.S. T-bill for a 0.1% yield right now. So the, effectively, interest rates in North America at the short end are zero. Mark Carney's already said he's gonna keep interest rates at zero, or close to zero in Canada, until this time next year. The central banks are worried about what's called deflation, a falling overall price index. And the way to avoid that is to really prime the pump and put a lot of liquidity into the system. So rates are gonna stay low 
very low for probably the next six, nine months a year. But at that point, I think there's going to be a, a concern about whether we've overprimed the pump and a Fed inflation. And so you could certainly see short rates rise by 200, 300 basis points over the course of the six months, let's say, in the second part of 2010. The other concern I has, have is at the, at the long end, um, rates right now are, again, historically low. You know, you can get 10-year money in the, in, in the United States for about 3%. But the U.S. government is going to borrow $1.8 trillion this year, uh, incredible sums, and $1.3 trillion next year as part of their budget plan. So that's huge pressure on, on bond markets right there without any private investment. Imagine what's going to happen to long rates as the private investment starts to return. It's going to be what's called by economists crowding out. Mm -hmm. So a lot of pressure put on financial markets at that point. So I can certainly see yield curves uh, uh, through 2010 rise across the board. So rates rise by 200, maybe 300 basis points by the time we're done. And even an upward tilting at the long end. All that tells me that you have never better, had a better time to get access to money right. Right now is the time to go lock in, you know, try and pre-finance as, uh, as much of your activity as possible because you're never going to get a better price. Uh, I should say that risk premium have come off. One of the things that happened last fall is that all of the risk factors in financial markets went crazy. And the, you know, the, the risk spread that people all face uh, doubled overnight. I mean, for your average consumer in Canada, for example, uh, personal credit costs rose by 200 basis points over the six month period between, let's say, September and, and March. Those are now coming down. So we're seeing a little reduction in, in risk factors built into capital markets. But the, the fundamental cost of money is going to rise, mm -hmm. simply because there's going to be so much pressure on global capital markets, thanks to you know, government spending like crazy right now to try and stimulate, and then the eventual return of private investment. So we're at the International Livestock Congress in the Calgary Stampede. Uh, you yeah, I'm supposed to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't go very far in a beef conference without uh, producers talking about the dollar. Yeah. Um, Canadian dollar has been, uh, we've seen the ramp, you know, the, yep. the high, you know, we've seen, uh, we've the, seen the massive the, drop down. Over the last two years, it's gone from $1.10 to $0.78. Cents. It moves $0.03 cents in a given day. So the real challenge is what's the trend, right? Yeah, are, are we gonna, is this volatility going to continue or what, what can we expect? Well, first, first off, the volatility, I think, is now sort of a built-in factor in financial markets around the world, whether they're equity markets, currency markets, um, e even affecting things like, like bond yields. Um, our dollar is clearly a petrocurrency. It's very clearly tied now to what's happening with global oil prices. Although it's interesting how natural gas prices are a bit soft. So there's a bit of a delinking going on right now between oil and gas prices. Um, I think the, there's only one way that oil prices are gonna go for me and that's up. Okay. But it's not gonna be a smooth walk. Just in the last few weeks, we've seen oil go from 50 to 60 to 70 bucks a barrel and fall back to around 60 today as markets look out and, and look for the end demand for energy and realize that with this tepid recovery, this weak recovery means you're not going to have a really strong recovery in demand for oil. But upward pressure on oil and energy prices and other commodity prices mean, translates into upward pressure in the Canadian dollar. So our forecast is for the dollar to sort of rise, uh, you know, forecasters always say gently, it's going to be like this. <laughs> But rise towards something, say, in the low in the low 90s by the end of 2010. Okay. Um, I'm a bit surprised the dollar shot to, to 92 cents and fell back to 86, but that's the nature of the turbulence right now. Yeah. But I think anybody who doesn't plan for the dollar to be around 90 cents by the end of this year, with upward pressure going forward, is probably making a mistake. You should have scenarios where you're anticipating the dollar going stronger than that, so you should think through the impact on your business of both a dollar that's up by five cents or down by five cents. But something pushing towards 90 cents by year end, I think is a really, is, you know, is a really solid, frankly conservative forecast for the dollar and then upward pressure over time. So the days of relying upon a cheap currency to sell our stuff uh, you know, in the US market are gone. It's over. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna see the dollar below 75 cents um, for, frankly, it might even be decades wow. to come. Okay, Glenn, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, you can find uh, a lot more of Glenn's information at www.conferenceboard.ca. Uh, Glenn, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure.